everybody, it's Brock and we got a brand new episode of All About. Hope y'all are doing really good out there. Hope y'all are having a fantastic summer. Today we got a brand new video of All About and it's not about a fish or coral. We're actually doing it on an urchin. So these guys are really fun to have in your tank. They're a joy to watch and they're also really, really good to have with your cleanup crew. They can do some damage to some algae. So today we're learning all about the Halloween urchin. Now this is actually a hairy pincushion urchin, so they are really easy to handle, and they're also really easy to take care of. So jumping right into it, prices on them, you'll normally spend about $30 to get one of these guys. Tank size, you'll need about a 20 gallon, which really size doesn't matter, it's mostly about just making sure you have enough food for them in there. Care level, they are super easy to take care of, they're really good beginner cleanup crew to add in there, you shouldn't have no problem taking care of them. Temper, they are peaceful. They do really well with other cleanup crew in there, and they're not going to mess with any of your fish, so they do really well in that. Reef compatibility, yes, they do great in the reef tank. They're not going to mess with any of your corals. They're not going to mess with any of your inverts. They do really well to stay away from all that and just go around them to clean up the algae. Temperature, you want to keep it about 72 to 78. always like to stick right on 78 on all my heaters. DKH, you want to keep it 8 to 12 pH 8.1 to 8.4 and your salinity 1.023 to 1.025 so keep it right in there it's a little bit more specific that way that just keeps them really healthy and it's very important to do a real slow acclimation pretty much whatever you acclimate your fish double it so whenever I put this guy in my tank I acclimated him for about two hours so I just took my time went real slow with them that way the levels didn't jump too fast on them because they do not do well whenever tank levels are jumping. Max size, so they can get about three inches, they can get about the palm of your hand, so they get pretty large eventually, but it does take some time. Colors are very pretty. They got a black body with these white spikes and tentacles flowing all around them, and in between all of that are these really bright orange spikes where it gets its name from on Halloween. Diet, so they are a herbivore, Algae is the biggest thing in their diet. They have to have it to stay healthy. But really, they're going to be eating leftover food as well. Detritus, all kinds of stuff that's left down there at the bottom of the tank and around your rocks. So he's almost like an omnivore because he's going to eat all kinds of stuff at the bottom of the tank. And on your rocks and algae that's growing. A big reason why people like to get them is because they'll eat that detritus up. And they're also really good about eating hair algae. So if you have a real bad hair algae outbreak in your tank... You can literally set these guys on top of the algae and he'll go to town on it. Origin, so urchins are actually being aquacultured more and more nowadays. So most of the times you can get one that is aquacultured by a company. So look out for that. But originally they did come from the Indo-Pacific area. So Indonesia, places around there is where you would normally find these. Compatibility, so they can go with any kind of fish, whether they're peaceful or even predatory. Some fish, puffers and your triggers and some of your bigger groupers. I wouldn't house them with those because they really might see it as a snack. Even though with the spikes on it, they still might pick at them. But if you have some smaller predatory fish, like I have a little white spotted puffer in my coral tank right now with the urchin, and he doesn't even mess with them. Just swims right by them. Doesn't pick at them or anything. So it does good with those. He'll do it good with tangs, gobies, grass, anything like that, he'll do just fine. Now you can have multiple urchins in the tank together, but it's just really important to make sure they have enough to eat. You don't want them competing for food and running out of food for both of them or multiple of them to eat. So a lot of times if you do have enough algae growing in your tank, get a couple of them, they'll have a blast in there. But if you only have so much algae and you might need to supplement it, I'd recommend only getting one of them. That way he has plenty to run around and eat. Venomous, so there are some urchins out there that are venomous, but this specific one is not. The spikes are sharp, so just be careful when handling them in the wild whenever people are like scuba diving and stuff. The main problem they have with these is they'll actually step on them, so that amount of force will puncture your skin with the needles, but anything, just handle them, just grabbing them and putting them somewhere, you're not going to have a problem dealing with them. They're not like your black long spine urchins that actually are poisonous on the needles that stick out. They're not going to be like those, so you'll have a much easier time handling these. Some things to take note of, 
is copper-based medication is very harmful to them. They do not survive it. They will not handle it. So make sure if your tank does have copper in it, get it out. Or if you need to do some copper dosing in the tank that he's in, make sure to take him out because he will not survive that. It also will not survive nitrate spikes. So if you ever have some too much food gets dumped into the tank, or if you just weren't on top of your water changes, those kind of spikes will really harm these guys and they most likely will not survive. So make sure you keep on top of your water changes. Make sure you're watching your levels. As long as they stay in the clear, this guy will flourish. Like I said, they are great hair algae eaters. It's the main reason I wanted one in my tank. But what's really good about it is he's good about getting in between things, like in between your zoas. A lot of times my zoas will grow hair algae in between them. He, he's almost like a weed eater, just going in there and picking out the algae in between them and in tight spaces in the rocks. He's really good about getting those tentacles in there and eating it up. If you do notice their spines beginning to fall off, it's usually due to poor water conditions or it's being bothered by something in your tank, like a fish is picking at him too much and causing him too much stress. So always be aware, make sure you look at him, make sure he looks good, make sure there's no spikes falling off because if there are, you'll definitely wanna test your water and make sure nobody's bullying him. Now, if you do start to run out of algae in the tank, you can always supplement it with dry seaweed. So you can either put it on a clip in the tank, he goes up to my clip at, the, at nighttime and goes and eats the rest of what the tank didn't eat. So you can do it that way or you can rubber band pieces around rocks in different spots of the tank, he'll run around and eat that too. So even if you do run out of natural algae growing in your tank, you can still supplement them. Now they can be shy during the day, but it'll really pick up feeding during the night. You'll just start to see patches of algae disappearing whenever you wake up in the morning and check your tank. It's pretty funny. I have seen reports online of them eating coralline algae. So if you got some really pretty purple coralline algae growing around your tank and you don't want that to be disappearing. I have seen some people report that it was eaten on the coralline algae and turn it white. So if you want to avoid that, I would avoid getting this urchin. Now the biggest thing about these, just like your tuxedo urchin, is they will pick up things around the tank. It's really cool to see. They'll pick up loose things around the tank like hermit crab shells, snail shells, loose coral, rubble rock, sand, anything that's like not too heavy but I'm telling you, they'll grab it and stick it on them. They do this because they see it as useful during the day. So whether it's food on it that they can eat for later or armor for protection from predators and the sunlight. They've even seen them put multiple things on top of them to make them heavier so that they can survive storms that come through the ocean. So when the currents pick up and they don't get blown away, they'll stick a lot of things on them so that it weigh them down throughout the night and survive the storm and still be in the same spot. So it's pretty crazy. But like you can see in the video, he picks up all kinds of stuff during the week. I swear every day I woke up, I was seeing something new on top of his head. Other than that, that pretty much hits on everything you need to know to take care of the Halloween urchin. They are really fun to watch. They're easy, they're good for beginners, they're good for experts, but really they're good about eating hair algae in places that snails and hermit crabs won't get. So I definitely recommend getting one for that. Remember, they're not venomous. They do still have spikes. Just be careful when handling them. But I'm telling you, it takes a lot of pressure for them to actually stick you. So you'll do fine. Make sure you acclimate them slow. And always make sure he's got plenty to eat in the tank. If you do start to run low on algae, make sure to supplement it with some dry seaweed like your sea veggies. They always love that stuff. Other than that, you should do fine taking care of these. If you do have any additional questions, please leave them down in the comments or reach out to me on social media. I'll be glad to get back to you. Hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Hope you have a good rest of the night. And I will see y'all later. Make sure to like and subscribe. Check out my other videos and keep subscribing, y'all. Keep telling your friends. We're so close. We are 222 subscribers away from hitting the big 10K. I'm so excited. Hope you all have a good one and I will talk to y'all later.